Love Marys and Scooloo. Bye. Next chapter, welcome to the family. What? That's my favorite song from, from Brother Bear. Uh, yes, I absolutely enjoyed Brother Bear. With the air of a proud general surrounding her, and a shaft across her chest that held many buttons on it that clanked when she walked, Scooloo marched into the clubhouse and passed her two friends. Some friends could only look in amazement at the little orange filly as she made her way to the podium that stood before a large whiteboard with many pictures on it. Look at determination, never leaving her face. The little pig just turned to her friends and spoke with a deep voice. All right, Crusaders, listen up! Before we begin our talk about the next plan, let's recreate. Our first date was their one, which failed! On the bright side, we got all the free spaghetti we could eat, Emma Blue says. She continued to work on four little model ponies. School rolled her eyes at this before adjusting her four star general helmet and continuing. Next, the next date, which also failed! Here we sadly got Randy and Applejack banned from the club for life! Sleepy Bell said with a down look on her face. Third, Rusko Romance! But that we failed as well. Yeah, sorry about not helping you with that one, Scoots. It's okay, School said before turning the board. But this next point sure worked! One out of dub, I'm racing, meet the parents! Racing behind the pony, School up put out a rock, small rod, slap the sticks against the board. <coughs> As you may not know, Rainbow Dash's mom and dad. Into the very mask of Rainbow Picture will appear. And her motherly dash with an apron on. Are coming over to visit us. And apparently, they are very busy and don't always get time to see Dash. But he heard about her adopting me and come over. To see their new granddaughter. This is phase one. Me and my new grandparents. Phase two? I trust that part of the job. So you about an apple bloom turned to each other and nine. Well, I was stuck back at home. I stuck some messages out to Pitsqueak, so he could write a letter to Fluttershy's parents saying that she wanted to see him. Applebloom said. I said, let you know, guys. Um, this is before Fluttershy's parents were canonized, and this was before Daz's parents were canonized. I'm going to tell you more about them when we get there. Well, I had to you look up where the parents live so we can mail the letter to the Frankie Death. Sleeve said with a smile on her face. Good. Now, phase two, Scooloo said, looking at the four tall sweet hosts. I'll try to get Rainbow Jazz to where Fluttershy your parents are. Naturally, Rainbow and Fluttershy will be happy to see each other. But when Fluttershy's parents see how happy she is to be near her, Sleeve will exasperate the scene. Never ain't, Sleeve said with a smile. Where? Scooloo says he puts her helmet back into place. Well, when Fluttershy's mom and dad see how happy Fluttershy and Rainbow Jazz are together, her father will be all like, Sweet said, holding up the stallion doll, mare doll, and the doll that looked like fire shy. Young lady, we do not approve of you hanging out with this mare. She is a horrible ruffian that does not deserve you. We forbid you from ever seeing her again. Mom will be like, I agree, she is all poop and will only bring you to us. Fire shy will take trouble and hide behind your parents, feeling weak and helpless. Then Rainbow Dash will puff out her chest heroically and be all like, Scooter said, bringing out a small rainbow doll. Hey! You can't tell Fluttershy who she can or can't see. She's one of the kids, sweetest parties out there. What's more, my best friend and I love her. There's nothing you guys can say I'll chase that, and I'll do everything I can to stay with her. Sleep out for joining in. Bring the Fluttershy doll. Wait for the dolls to represent Mr. and Mrs. Fluttershy. And then Fluttershy will be like, Oh, Rainbow, you're right. I should let my parents decide who I can and can't see. Thank you for letting me see the light. You're so brave and strong. Scooter smiled as he put the Rainbow Dash doll with the Fluttershy doll, spoke in a deep voice. Oh no, babe. Now come, let me take you away from your evil, abusive parents. Just tell me where we can be free. <laughs> Sleep Bell screamed in a perfect great distance for Fluttershy's voice. Then I'll fall instantly in love, get married, and we'll all live together happily. Scooter says he held the two dolls in the air. Never was sat there, watching the plan unfold with a hoof to her chin. I don't know, girls. Y'all yeah, sure about this? I thought I said his parents nest or not. Oh, please, Scooter said, putting the dolls down. Did you read all those books Rarity has? Every pony knows that the bride's parents are always evil monsters that just want to ruin the bride's happiness. It happens all the time in these books. The father's parents are usually the fun and loving ones, while the wife's parents are monsters. Well, it's just that I met Tierly's parents. They're not always nice as ponies like a mate. But they all love Blink Mike, Apple Bloom argued. 
probably fight, you know, the high trauma of family squabbles from innocent eyes. Um, okay. I want to confess something right here. If there's a trope I hate in these sitcom stories and these sitcom shows that I've seen again and again, most probably with Flintstones, I hate, hate the evil mother-in-law trope. I despise it with every single fiber of my being. Hate it. I hate, hate guys every nother minute of it. Because it just never makes any sense to me. Like, the mother keeps wanting the, her daughter to be with somebody she recommends. And I have to suspect that with all of the trauma that Fred's mom does, well, let me put it this way. If Fred's mother-in-law had been anywhere near my family, you wanna know what my mom would have done? Kick the bitch out! Oh no no no. Not just you know kick the bitch out. She would have removed her from her life. Wait a minute. My mom technically did remove her mother from my life! Yeah! The abuse of mother in law on my side of family? Mom kicked her out! And I have to surprise that Wilma doesn't do the same to her mother, that Marge never does that to her sisters, and everybody else who has a bad mother-in-law, they don't do that with theirs! It's like, in these sitcoms, the wife wants to keep her mother and her family, despite, you know, the mother being one of the most evil people in existence! Oh! I'm surprised that she allows that bitch to be anywhere near Pebbles! I hate this trope! I hate it so damn much! Every time I see it in a sitcom, I just shake my head and go, no! Heck, it's one of the best things about Full House is that most of the parents on that side, you know, are exactly, you know, evil! But it's like every time I watch a classic sitcom, it's, oh, here comes the mother, mother-in-law on the wife's side. I think you don't deserve my daughter. But well, here's what I would say to that woman. You don't deserve your grandchildren. Because seriously, woman, who's more important to you? The man in your life or your mother-in-law who is proving to be controlling, abusive, and doesn't seem to care about your happiness. See, that's what the other thing that always gets me about these mother-in-law tropes. The mother never seems to care about her daughter's happiness. And you know what this tells me, the audience? That woman's a controlling, abusive slut! It doesn't deserve somebody like Wilma! Damn, I hate that trope. Probably if I, you know. The high trauma of family squabbles from young ears and eyes, Scooter said. Seriously? Evelyn was said. I brought arts and utter disbelief. Scooter let out a sigh, sigh of desperation. She made her way to her scooter helmet story. Look, it's how it works in the books, and we're going to do everything by the book! Now, she so had walking to the door of the clubhouse. Oh, the one exception I have to, the, to my hatred? Is, uh, Pear Butter's backstory. Oh, look! Father in law was a jerk! She kept, he ran out of her life, and he regretted it! They took the trope, and made it a tragedy, and made it one of my favorite episodes! I love this show. Yeah, see, so, yeah, I'm walking to the door of the clubhouse. You girls head home for now. I'll go be up with Rainbow Jess so we can get ready to be up with my grandparents. Everyone knows the big grand Scooter's face. Excited to meet them, ain't ya? You better believe it, Scooter said with a big smile. My other grandparents died before I was born, so this is going to be the first time I get to have some. And they're the parents of Rainbow Dash. How cool is that? Yeah, but your other grandparents are going to be monsters. Sweet Belle says she walked next to Apple Bloom. 
Scootaloo's ears drooped at the realization, feeling down what was said. Singer had to remove some of the doubt that entered her mind. She gave a soft shrug. Eh, it'll be fine. You'll see. I'll see you girls tomorrow to let you know how brilliantly the plan works. The smile crept along her face as she rode off towards her home. The Scootaloo drove her skirt along the dirt paths of Honeydale. Her mind began to think over the details of her plan. On the one hand, she was excited to meet her grandparents. However, on the other, she was scared to be meeting Flareside's mom and dad. This is going to happen sooner or later. Might as well get meeting mom and dad. Flareside's mom and dad out of the way now so I can figure out if I should hate him. But still, a small side skate her lets as she looked down to the ground as it rolled under her scooter. I hate to get a fight going. No! She mentally yelled as she focused on the road ahead. I knew how bad this was going to be when I came off the plane. Can't change it now. Besides, it's better to get out of the way now. Right? A soft little whisper could be barely called a scream. It was heard from inside the cottage outside the ever free forest. Oh my gosh! My mama, my parents are coming over! Fireside yelled as he looked over the lair. Get to visit, Fireside! A great pegasus said. She gave a muffin and stood outside the door. No, it isn't derpy. Whereas I says, she frantically flirted and flittered about her home. It's going to be horrible. So underprepared. I'm not ready to see my parents. This is going to be a horrible disaster. My mother has a stick of perfection. Their father is very tidy. There's no way that they'll approve of this mess. It can't be that bad, right? Derpy says he wanted inside the house, eager to help. They can't be. Whereas I squeaked in out of fear. Mother one time scared the stallion fight, because he didn't get to keep a schedule. And father, I don't want to think about it. Oh, it's so it could be horrible when I get here and they see my home as a mess. I can help. Derpy said when we were to the upper room. Oh, thank you so much, Derpy. I appreciate She was about to show her gratitude when she heard the door knock. Fleshy, sweetie, I came to visit, a voice said from behind the door. Fleshy fainted. A loud cheer was heard through the streets of Ponyville. A scooter drove her skirt at the ground at high speeds. Though it always bothered her, she wasn't able to fly yet. The moment she was on that skirt, all the bother was forgotten. A fierce smirk came to her, so she bowed and weaved through the streets of Ponyville, dodging each point that was brave enough to get in her way. The feeling that she had on the bike, the way that the wind blew through her mane and coat, the way the wind blew by her wings, was the closest that she would ever get to true flying. This was something that she took with pride. Something that only she could do. The only Pegasus in the world who could master the ground as well as she could. The only one in the world who had total mastery over the scooter. She let out a few laughs as she began to perform maneuvers on the ground. It was good as any Wonderbolt. It could weave past other points as easy as a wire drop to the ground. Without missing a beat, she turned to face her personal ramp and charged it, buzzing her wings to propel herself to it. As soon as she hit the ramp, she got herself once high into the air. The cover scooter for a few moments to spread her wings and let herself flip for a few moments in a free fall in the sky. So Tracy performed it many times. It was one of her favorites that allowed for her, just for a moment, to feel like a real Pegasus. No longer the speed goddess of the land, but an aerial acrobat. Taking a deep breath, she allowed herself to enjoy the warm feel of the air flowing past her as she sprayed out her limbs. As if a kind pony had swooped in and held her in the air. For a time, as he was up there. Holy, you're close. Telling you that it will be all right. I care for you. So small came to her as she realized in the company year. But looking down at the ground below, curious as why she had not landed yet. She lowered her eyes downward. She noticed that a pair of blue legs were now wrapped around her waist, holding her to a similarly colored chest. Ringo Jazz! Scoo squealed as she turned around in her grip and knelt on her sister's neck, returning a hug. Okay, this is kind of something Dad did to me a couple of times when I ran around. He would stretch out his big broad arm and frat me in a hug. Thank you. Yes, yeah, squirt! Dad says he put the fillet on her back. I thought you were getting back home. Getting ready? Scooter asks. I was, but then I got bored waiting for you. Sorry to pick you up instead. Dad says, smile on her face as he flew off to the waiting cloud house. So, excited to see your grandparents? Scooter nodded very enthusiastically. Yes! So, as she landed on the threshold of the cloud home, what are your mom and dad like? What do you think? 
If he raised me, then he must be some of the most awesome parents in existence. Dad said a confident look on her face. They need to be. Dad was one of the best aerial aces out there. Always competing in some sort of sport or another. And Mom? Well, she was so close to becoming one of the best Wonder Bowls ever. But stuff happened. Well, what happened? School asked as she walked to the house with Dad. Dad smiled softly as she walked to the table. Next to the cats picked up a photo of her and the pink pigs as well. I happened to her. It took Skulu a few moments to figure out what Dad's hat meant. Oh, she had to give up being wonderful to raise you. Yeah. Dad said it was so small, so he ran the hoof over the photo of Mom. Mom said that she wanted her to do her best to raise me. Sometimes I would ask her if she ever regretted her decision. She always told me that she had to. She would pick me over every, anything else every time. Besides, <laughs> she got a small chuckle as she put the photo away. She helped teach me everything I knew about stunt flying. As I said, I need to remind you guys, this is before we got canon Rainbow Dance as his mom and dad. So, at the time I wrote this story, I decided to go ahead and make Dance as his mom and dad Firefly and Rainbow Blitz. Not the canonical article names, but this is the way I saw it, especially after I saw, um, well, that Rainbow made guy that Dash was with in the, um, in the episode with the Equestria Games. Who, shut up, Rainbow's dead in the first place! Sorry. But, come on. You guys need to do some creative design and not decide to make her his dad or uncle? Come on, guys. Come on, writers. But, if I'm to be truthful, I do love Das as a canonical mom and dad. And I do enjoy their characters. I really do. I like the idea that Das's mom and dad are over-eager, over-excited, over-strenuous parents who are happy, who cheer happily about their daughters' achievements every single time. I, but I still kind of prefer the old family. You see, here's the thing. You need to learn. Even if a show disproves your fanon with canon stuff like that, you can still enjoy the fanon material that comes out, and you can still prefer that over the canon material if you like. The only problem becomes when you obsess over it and, well, be like Mike and go, I prefer the fanon material! Nothing will ever be as good! Good! Your show is ruined because this thing live up with the fanon! And other crap like that. Then it becomes a problem. The moment you start demoralizing one over the other. No. It's just their interpretation and it's just their camp. Nothing more, nothing less. Trust me, this speech is going to get really important in about a few minutes. Heck. She did help she taste learn everything she knew about stunt flying. Heck, she probably forgot more than I ever learned. So it worked out. That being said, I always kind of like the idea the, that Rainbow Dash's mom did teach her everything. And it was kind of her best inspiration. Yeah, did she fix your mane? Schooler shook her head. Nope. Wings praying? Nope. Tail comb? Nope. Good. Dash said, looking and nuzzling Schooler's nails. You must go outside to me, him. With a quick nod, the little faces ran out the door with her mother to watch the skies for the two visitors. For a few moments, they sat on the threshold of the front door, keeping an eye on the empty skies until two little dots appeared on the horizon. A smile crept the rainbow's face, and she could make out two dots as they came closer, taking the shape of two Pegasi. On the right was a dark blue stallion with a rainbow mane and tail, much like his daughter's. To the stallion's left was a pink mare with an electric blue mane, Flying at his pace. With joyous glee, Rainbow Dash waved her host frantically to wave her parents down. Hey, Scoots, I should warn you. Mom could get a little excited to see little falls. Look at me! Oh! Scooloo asked, only to get tackled through the doorway into the living room by a pink and blue bar. 
Oh my gosh, she is so cute! Screamed the pink fairy sister she held a little fairy close to her in a big bear hug. Bingo, if you didn't tell me that you had adopted the little gal, I would have sworn she was your own daughter. Look at her, she looks just like you did when you were that age. The mayor looked at the little filly in the legs and smiled warmly. I'm your grandmother, but you can call me grandma. See, then gave Scooby a couple of quick kisses on her forehead before hugging tightly. Firefly, sweetie, if you keep this up, you'll smother the poor little gal. The stallion says he walked over to where his wife and new granddaughter were. Then at least he'll die knowing she was love. Okay, um, here's a little inspiration from this. My mom goes gaga over little babies. She likes playing with them. And we'll talk to the parents about them. And this is how I see my mom would act when I have kids. The stallion rolled his eyes at his wife's antics before holding out his hoof. My name is Spectrum Burst. This is my wife, Firefly. But you can call me Grandpa. Hi! Scooby said, holding out his hoof. Now then, now the enterprise is over, he said. Taking Scooby's hoof and immediately pulled her into a warm, big, warm hug. Welcome to the family, my little Scooby. <laughs> Please meet you, Grandpa. Scooby said, nestling to the chest of the dark blue stallion. Getting up from the hug, Spectrum. Rainbow, did you bring us anything to eat? We kind of skipped breakfast. Yay! Das yelled, looking at her parents as he smiled sheepishly. Did you tell me to never skip breakfast? Because that was the second best meal of the day! Well, we were kind of excited to see you again. We to get here as soon as possible, Firefly said. Firefly said, I'll get up next to school. Remember Das face over response. Fine! We'll go make us a grab and then we'll go out of town. I'll help you, Dassie. Spencer says he followed Das in the kitchen. Oh no, Dad. You know how you get when you're in the kitchen. You'll turn the entire place to a state so I'll make it faster, Dad suggested. Oh, come on. You love my cooking, Spencer says. He moved Dad to the side. Now let me. Firefly giggled to herself softly. <laughs> come on, Squirt. Your mom and grandpa will be at this for a while. So how about I show you some embarrassing photos of your mom? Maybe my dad doesn't have any embarrassing photos. She's too awesome to have those. Scooter says he followed her grandma to the cats. <laughs> Rule one, kiddo. Firefly said, getting a photo album from a saddle bag. Mothers always have cute and embarrassing photos of their children. School out uh, saw giggle at the fault before kilping. Does Rainbow? Yep. Firefly nodded. She's just waiting to spring it on you. Now let's see. Oh! Firefly smiled. She saw a picture of Rainbow Dazz on a rug, nibbling a year of a blue wonderbolt. Here's Dazzy on a rug with her favorite plushie. This is when we brought her home, she said, showing a photo of a yawning filly. Rainbow Dash curled up next to her mom. When we had to watch her mid yawn. Oh, and this? She said, she was struggled. So fixed her a very wet firefly. Looking at an equally wet Rainbow Dash with a frown. Was when I tried to give a defiant Rainbow Dash a bath. And this is a sequel. She saw the photo of the spectrum. It was just a soaked and wet rainbow. Looking at the camera. Wait, Grandpa could help you out? Scooby said, of course, dear. Firefly said with a smile as he looked at the next photo of her, Spectrum Dash, and Firefly in the hospital room. That's what good partners do. They help raise the children, help the other when the others feel like down or sick, and help lift each other up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all based off of my parents. Although, she chuckled as she looked at the photo of Dash on top of the small Spectrum, fifty five in her mouth, I was the better teacher. Mom! What are you doing there? Rebo Dad asked, poking your hand in the room. You aren't selling skill to so fancy photos of me, are you? Slay so smiled to Fireflies' face, face as he said plainly, No! Dad could only write an eyebrow disbelief as he went back to the kitchen. Okay, then! Firefly turned to look at her young granddaughter with a wink and went back to the photos. Now, here's a picture of when we took Dassey to meet Santa Hose for the first time. Oh, did she cry the entire time? She had pointed to a pink hoof to the photo of a crying Philly Dass. Mom! Rain played full sandwiches in her hoof. You weren't showing your embarrassing photos! Firefly smiled at her daughter as her husband and her and the personal played food to her. Call it a mother's prerogative, sweetie. Just wait until school starts dating or has foals her own. See how long it takes you to bring out her photo album. School had a small sigh of relief. 
as if she knew that Daz didn't probably have the appropriate picture album to embarrass her. Then, almost as Daz knew a school was relief, swearing she sat down to cast next to school. Oh, about ten seconds. So you tell me a lot of stories. She did talk to smuggly and see who brought school to me. Skulu let out a small cup of fear as the thought hair walked Grandpa took a seat on the love cushion next to his wife. As the early afternoon wore on and food became smaller, discussing around the table turned to things that families usually discuss. There were talks about rainbow parents are doing, Dash is training in the Wonderbolts, and if Dash was in relationships. Not yet, at least, was Skulu's side of this. The conversation also turned to Skulu's life, her friends, friends as the little filly went on. They discussed it in life with the various subjects that were important, and the ones that weren't so important in the greater aspect of life. As the discussion went on, Skulu couldn't tell, stop smiling at a heartfelt smile at the scene before her. The way the four talked, the ways that they talked to each other, the ways that they would be a joke with one another, gave her the feeling of being in a real family. She wondered to herself if this is what her life would have been like if her mom and dad were alive, and with her at the moment. Looking down at her plate, Mind began to envision what life would be once he had gotten Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash together. The two lovers talking about their day, Dash on her training of Fluttershy with her animals. Looking at her plate, it's too big a sign in front of her school asked, So, Grandma and Grandpa, how did you two get together? Oh, well, now that's a story. Let me tell you, the fire voice said, picking a small cup of cola. You see, it happened a few years ago. I was busy resting at my home, doing some practice deals for the Wonder Bolts. Wow! You were more wonderful? Skula asked. One of the best, Dad said, proud smile on her face. Where do you think your mom got most of her talent from? Spencer said with a smile as he looked at his wife. Anyway, I was in a kitchen getting myself something to drink. I heard a loud crash coming from my living room. I quickly ran to the room to see what had happened there. And there, when his head of the cloud floor, his legs sticking up, was Spectrum. Here's the white stallion crashes to my house. Went over to him and pulled him out from the floor. When I asked him what he was doing there, I told him he was facing a few thunderheads for a small sword of storm in Plentyfield. When a worker shot him from behind, said he was crashing in my house. Well, go let him fly out with a heart, head, and wing. So I fired the rest of my cats and drank some soda. I spent the next few hours talking about our lives. What our hobbies were our flying styles. Well, soon it was time for him to leave and we said our goodbyes. About a week later, I do it doing some of my own flying tricks. My good friend Masquerade accidentally hit me in the head with a ball and sent me crazy into Spectre's house. We later found out Masquerade found out about our little meeting. I wanted to play Maskmaker. He smiled at Firefly. I think it worked. I guess you must have also heard about me sneaking out of pink of your mo grandma's fine flank. You still sneak pinks. Only now you're much more obvious. Firefly said with a smile. I can't help it if you're still hot after all this time right here. A smile came across his face. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You repress that in. Screamed Rainbow Dash. If you guys have uh, read uh, Fall, you'll note that um, they are having a similar conversation about Firefly's hotness. That's another thing I tend to do with Rainbow Dash's mom and dad. That those two are still hot for each other even after all this time. After Spectre was nice enough to care for me and get me some of drink, Arthur took me to Little Deer for supper. As the day was over, we said our goodbyes and went our separate ways. Until he fell through my roof again. Went on another date. This is the way our dates went for a little while. I would fall through the roof of his house, or he would fall through mine, always then at a date or a snuggle fest. At one point I had enough, and the next time he fell through the roof, I looked out and said, Spectrum, I love you and all, but would you mind not falling through my roof so much? Well then, he said, only a small box from behind his wing. Guess I'll have to start making this to our house. The look on your grandma's face when I proposed was priceless, Spectrum said. So, you said yes right away, right? Scooby asked. Well, actually, I had to think of a few moments, but really, this is so adorable at the moment, I just couldn't say no. So in a few months, we were married, and a little while after that, we had Dashi. When Rainbow was born, that was when you stepped down from being a Wonderbolt to care for her, wasn't it? Skulu asked, raising her soda. Not completely, Firefly corrected. After I had her, I asked to become more of a teacher to a flyer. 
I just really enjoyed teaching so much that when I was ready to come back to service, tell us to stay a teacher. Though, see, I swear coming to your face as you walk to the front door. I still out fighting the pants off of any rookie. Brave and Tess could only look at her mother with a confident smirk. Is that a challenge? Not a fair one. After all, you'd be carrying the squirt all the entire way. Firefly says he stood outside. Says you, my buddy has said with a smirk. I can fly rings around with you, even holding on to the squirt. As good as Spectre walked up to the dirt girls, the stallion smirked. I should have known to get like this. Birds of a feather. Well, makes for great exercise. But I can't fly yet, Grandpa. Hold those feet while you on the ground, Scoogoo said, frowning a little. Hey, now that, this is a family flight, and I mean a family flight. Death said, taking the little filly in her forelegs before stretching her wings. Contact? Contact. Let's do this! Firefly said, smiling as he's ready to get off. And go! Death says he took off. From Rainbow's house, the four ponies took off, and a lot of winds to glide them across the clouds of sky. They were passing by earthbound ponies who happened to look up. They see a flying V comprised of three pegasi. They would think it was a new aerial team, but it wasn't. It was a family of pegasi who helped each other through each other's lives. They knew each other well enough to keep a perfect sync with each other. With Rainbow Dash in the lead of their feed formation, the family of four soared and sailed to the sky, moving back and forth, allowing the winds to blow softly through their feathers to caress their wings. The group would only move to dodge an incoming cloud or bird. Turning her head to look deep and down, she gazed at her mom, or left to look at her mom and dad. Rainbow Dash could only smile happily, being able to see her this one for Down at the little filly laughing at her hus. Dad smirked at Scoo and held her close to her barrel. She put a small distance between her and her parents and performed the loop. Without missing a beat, the parents of Rainbow Dash joined in performing the mover. Fireflies joined her, turned her head to spread them, smirked at her husband, and were pointing out some speed in her flying and race flying next to Rainbow Dash. As she flew under her daughter, she put a confident smirk and winked at her. Rainbow's right. Her father came up quickly next to her, making a smooth wall air gals before leveling at her daughter's side. Looking down at Scootaloo, Rainbow Dash watched as a little fiddly giggled at some of the serious clouds passing by her stomach, tickling her. Still keeping a good grip on her daughter, Rainbow Dash began to lower her legs as Scootaloo would be at legs length away from her body. Turning her head up to look at her protector, Scootaloo looked at the signs of trust and love in the great Rainbow's face. Feeling she would not fall or be dropped. Fully out of tears, she thrusted out her hose and assumed a flying position with her family around her. As she stopped her tearing and closed her eyes, taking in the warm feeling of the wind around her. Warm for her family and the memories of her taking smaller flights with her mother so long ago. Her eyes didn't open in shock when she felt death let her go, became afraid she was in free fall. Then, that was when she felt two hose below her. Looking down, she saw the spectrum of Firefly held a little girl up over two hooves, as if she was to fit there in a big race. Smelling the two grandparents, he held her above her heads. She continued her fog flying, all the way until he landed in the market square. Smirking, Rainbow Dash set her young daughter down to the ground. Did we get the parties a good show? Dash, sweet. Firefly said with a smile, that was just a pre-show. Just wait until we really get started, then they'll see a show. Rainbow Dash let out a small chuckle. As he gave her mother a high huff in response. Turning her around, the four ponies began to walk around the marketplace until she heard a small voice calling out, Rainbow Dash. For her here, she quickly turned around to the sound of the voice. Fireside! Dash says he happily saw Fireside walking up to where her and her family was. Savari Pegasus came closer. Rainbow Dash immediately began to remember the events of the previous evening and the long, deep kiss she shared. That thought, and the warm memories of the embrace she shared in the moonlight made her blush and turned her head a little. What brings you here? So a smile came into Fireside's face as she began to remember the events of the previous evening, trying to hide her best to hide behind her maid to hide her bless. I was doing some small shopping with my. She's so interrupted by a firefly. You only came out to see her. Well, let me just Fireside Firewing! It's been a year since I saw your adorable face. She did give Fireside a big hug. Oh, look at you. You haven't changed at all. Hello, Fireside, Spencer said. Well, you know, Scootaloo and Tuck, who was never on a cookie. Still as sorry as ever, I see. Hello, Mr. Spectrum, Mrs. Firefly. It's good to see you again. 
fireside is still with a smile. <laughs> oh, stop it with that, Mr. and Mrs. Sup. You're making us sound old! Firefly said, rolling her eyes. Scooter chuckled and felt the stopping of very large hooves. What is that? Oh, I forgot to mention. My parents are here as well. Firefly says to me, he the footsteps go closer. Here! Here! Scooter lasses began to tremble. Her plan began to crumble in her mind. Now, instead of having Dash saving the day, it looked like she's going to end with her mother as a pasty smear at the end of some point's of. As far as Fireside nodded, a very large yellow mare walked up behind her. At first glance, all the muscles and tone of her body when she held her would make you think that this was a stallion, but a good long look at her would say otherwise. Large paces glared at the four points before her, focusing on Firefly in particular. Well, if it isn't Firefly, she said with a growl of her voice, HOW HAVE YOU BEEN?! Without warning, the pink pegasus was wrapped up in a big bear hug by the muscular pony. Great to see you again, Buzzy! Firefly managed in between gas of air. Now, again, I need to remind you, this is before the we got the canon Fluttershy's parents, where we found out that Fluttershy's parents were even more shy than she was! And we also got the introduction of the little brother. I had to tell you this, but if that little guy, but if he had been involved with parents, that boy would be sent to work. But yeah, this is before then, so I always kind of prefer to imagine Butterfly's parents at the time to be Mrs. Fire, Mrs. Shy, big. MUSCULAR! And we're talking 100 pounds of pure muscle! And her father being weak and weak. I kinda like that to comedy, because for one thing, doing the opposite of try thing to mess up with Firefly and Rainbow Dash, but I also kinda like the idea because, well, it shows that Fluttershy gets different things from there, and also shows different sides of parent raising. Now, this has to be asked, is it a fair idea to have Blair shy ghost parents be more shy than her? Or to go with my idea? Which technically works better for the joke? Because we know that this show is partly a comedy. So you gotta ask yourself, which works better for the joke? To have both of Blair Shy's parents being small and weak with her little brother, and I said LITTLE BROTHER COMICS! Yeah, IDW kind of messed up there. They had her. They said Sephir was her older brother. No, Sephir is her little brother. Or is it better to have her have a big, roaring, powerful mother and her big little father? Which joke works better? I'll leave that to you guys to figure it out. I can let go of Firefly. Posey turned her head to look at Spectrum. And you brought your big salty husband with you. How's it going, Spec? Keep an eye on my best friend, right? Not planning on breaking her heart, are you? Nope, not at all. More like she's keeping an eye on me, Spectre said, seriously laughing. A rainbow dash! Posey said, looking at the multicolored vein, quickly grabbing her and roughing right around Dash's mane. Glad to see you've been keeping up with your good training regime. Though, if you ask me, you're way too good for a bus of show off floppy flyers. The guards where it's at. No way! Dash yelled, slipping out of her grip. Rather than not be spending my time guarding a princess all day, give me the open air any day of the week. So totally not a slight against uh, where loyalties lie. Can't say. Can't say I didn't try, but you changed your mind. I'll make you a commander on the spot. Fuzzy said with a smile before turning to Scooloo. And who's this? Scooloo, ma'am. Scooloo said, quite intimidated by the large Pegasus. Meanwhile, in her head, she wants this the plan that she had crafted was now destroyed by several tons of C4 and a well organized construction crew. Fuzzy smiled softly, placed her hoof on the filly's head, rubbing the mane. Heh! <laughs> you look like a good kid! Just you wants it over your big sister Nestle. Rut needs it. 
You know, Rainbow Dash! Scoogle asked. A little shocked to say, she continued to watch her plan crumble down to his foundations. Of course I know her! A little scat was sometimes gone to the training ground to do some endurance runs! Ass! Pussy said with a scowl, before turning around to yell, Hey! Starcloak! You got your flag over here! Firefly or Brood are here! <laughs> yes, dear. Said a soft and kind voice as a great Pegasus with a pink paint came out for one of the stalls. HA! Got the photo right! Woo! Also, now I'm just thinking of my first opposing uh, talking to Sapphire. Sapphire! You're my favorite son! But you gotta get out of here and get start to work! Now! I can help you out with a little fighting some classes! Oh, Father, there you are. I was afraid you'd gotten lost. For as I said, her voice being a little louder to her quiet father. Okay, so I went with both. She had a quiet dad and a loud father. I mean, a quiet mother and a, a loud mother and a quiet father. Uh, no, I wasn't lost. Starcloak said, turning his head away shyly. I was just talking to this mare selling apples, and she offered me a deal I just couldn't refuse. And... Then I had to buy some extra carrots to show I wasn't being unfair. Oh, I do hope the cabbage merchant doesn't feel too bad. Yeah, Dad! Scoo asked, as the plan was now bulldozed into a parking lot, and the remains were put somewhere else. Oh yes, I know you can be shy and quiet, and mother can be kind of intimidating, but once you get to know them, they really are nice. Whereas I said, and Mom keeps just being kind to little calls. Yes! Nice! Scoogoo said. As she watched the remains of her plan be turned into pudding by Discord, then the pudding was eaten by her, Slee Bell, Twist, Al and a hyped upon sugar piggy pie. In short, she put the plan under Colossal Failure! Hey, Posey, we were about to spend the day together, like to like? Firefly asked. Eager to spend time with her friend. Sure! Posey says. The group began to walk away together. Scoogle let out a small sigh, as he followed the group, thinking to herself, Well, that was a failure. On the other hand, a soft smile came to Scoogle's face. She listened to the disgust until the six points were happening. It's great to have an awesome family. As the group of ponies walked through a small town, Scoogle walked up to the strong yellow pegasus. So, Posey, how did you get together with Star Cloak? You two seem so... Different? Yeah, we kind of are. Posey said, smiling. Well, you see, Patee! <laughs> Several years ago, I was a young private in the Royal Guard. I was busy training to do my job in the city. One day, I noticed this cute little stallion taking a few peeks at me whenever I passed by. I didn't think anything about it until I noticed him doing it more often. Sometimes in a mess all around the grounds. <laughs> Or sometimes when we pass each other on campus. Well, first I wonder if I had a sucker. Kid sucker, but a sucker nonetheless. So I went and saw my friends and found that a guy had a crush on me. And so said he was afraid to ask me. So I waited for him. And I waited, I waited, and I waited. Well, after a month of waiting, I had enough. Went over to him at the mess cell, so picked him up by a collar, and said, You, me, date now. Yeah, speak up. Okay. After the date, we had another. We had another. And eventually we found out how loved him as much as he did me. And I had hoped he would pop the question soon, but he didn't. Well, finally got tired of winning. Now they're outside our favorite place in the rain. Grabbed him by the collar and told him. He held on a ring and squeak. Okay, my darling. We were married a few months after that. When I came in the season, I wanted children. I looked him in the eyes and told him, You, me, babies, now! Yes, dear. He told me, We're giving me the kiss of my life. And 11 months later, he had a little flesh eye. She smiled softly. She watched her daughter, Rainbow Dash, walk somewhere to talk for a bit. Well, wow, that's something, Scooter said. I just wanted to shock. Thinking about the note that would definitely not be one of the dates you would use. As the afternoon rolled down, the ponies found the park to relax and play in. Once they went over to her mother, 
Mother? She asked, can we go somewhere private to talk? Sure! Fuzzy says she wants to her daughter to a small pass of flowers. Wait for the others. First, I laid out all four next to her mother. Kelly up closer as she looked at the flowers. How did you know you were in love with father? Play a covering wing over her daughter. Slight smile came to Posey's lips. What? You got certain mayor of mine? First, I immediately blessed a hit behind her pink mane. Well, what made you think it's a mayor? Because of a flower! Posey chuckles, he nuzzled on Dara's neck. I know you were into mayors for quite a while! Oh, I see. Where's a sick giggle? Is he it's a gentle nuzzle? Although, if Posey had been in fall, the whole rhymey subplot would have been over a lot quicker. You mind raping my daughter? Uh, yes? BAM! Posey still was sigh. It's supposed to feel where her lover taught her spectrum. Well, I guess I figured it out when I started to notice he added stuff to my life. Don't get me wrong. I love my friends. Firefly is the best sister a gal can ask for. Masquerade's a riot. However, it's different feeling with him. Really? Flair I asked. How so? Well, it was that. Mostly put her up to her chin and thought. Every time it was me, he brought something new to my life. Drills became more fun. Alleys with my friends became even better. The whole thing seemed new again. He brought out something in me. Something new? Flair I asked, raising her eyebrow of curiosity. Uh huh. She said with a smile, Help make me become a little softer and nasser. So me it was okay to be nasty once in a while. And I would help out bring the best of them. Loved me as much as I loved him. Because to him, I helped make everything brighter. I see. Flash I said, nodding. Slowly, Pussy got back up and stretched her wings. Well, things about to for me and Star Cloud to be heading home. Take care, you little self, my little flower. By the way, she said, lowering her head to Flare Side's ear, I think Rainbow Dash will be a great daughter in law. Flare Side felt her face red in embarrassment. What? No. Kid, he's always talking about on and on about the things he did that felt like I knew or probably even met her. She makes you feel any way like I do with Star Cloud. I approve. Thank you, Mother. Flare Side said, smiling softly. She wants her mom and dad fly home. Lots of Rainbow Dash's family. I should be going myself. Thanks for inviting me and my family to spend time with you. Hey, it was no problem at all. Dash remarked, definitely putting her hope to remain. See you later, Flares! Flares said nodded in response and flew off in the direction of her cottage. Well, Spectre looked at his granddaughter. Hey, Scoots. Speaking of home, how about I fight you there personally? I don't love to! Scoots said with a big smile on her lips as he walked by Spectre flowing off. Firefly and Rainbow Dash wants the two fly off. Takes six to miss her daughter. So, what about you and Fluttershy? What the hell was that? Hun, I'm 24 years older than you. I have more experience in seeing this than you. Firefly sits sinking her head, putting a hook to Dash's shoulder. Seeing the way you two have been looking at each other. The same way you mean Spectre will look at each other when we we're dating. Are you falling for her? Oh, well, I, uh. Dash said, simply over her words. Let me help, Firefly said, putting her forehead to Dasis and rubbing her nails with hers. Do you feel like you could perform better with her around? Well, yeah, but that's how it is with all my friends. Are there things you do with her alone? Things you could never see yourself doing with your other friends? Even a princess? How about when you two are alone? You learn to see a side of you that you rarely get seen? That when you two are alone, you feel like she brings something special to your day? You seem to know better when she's around? I'm sorry, guys, but this Saku Sasuke fan um, is right now thinking, I got some, I got a Naruto shipping figure, right? Yeah. That's it, looking away, blushing. Sometimes she makes you feel like a better pony. Then that's the way I feel with your dad, kid. Our advice said giving your daughter a hug. Even before we were married, he made me feel stronger and better. When he was around me, I felt better, I felt faster. And you feel a better pony. That's what loving some pony does to you. You feel like you're better with them. I have to say, 
You take that sepulcher, I approve. Death smile back as you return to hug. Thanks, Mom. See you later. Love you. Love you too, kid. Firefly said before falling off her husband. Love you too, Mom. Death said smiling, turning to fly off. See, Flux, you began to think one night a year ago. Well, Tess, what great dare you made, Sunny said. As well as you finished the meal. Hey, it's good to find me a dare, and I thought helping you out was the least I could do. Right about Dad said with a smile. That's what you seem to be best at, helping. Sunny said, looking down and smiling. No, he never had to. She was interrupted by a hug from Rainbow Dash. Hey, Skilus and your family. She's my sister. She smiles. She looked back at the yards, feeling, They see my family too. And they'll do anything for friends and family. Dash says she wants to go to the room. Seeing her little sister nicely tucked in. He's great. You have fun today? Kidding? I had a blast. School says he hugged a plus of Rainbow Dash close to her. They were both awesome. Told ya. Rainbow Dash said with a smirk. Now time for bed. School and I, before looking at his sister's eyes. Hey, Dash, did Grandma ever sing you any lullabies when you were a kid? Why? Let me sing one to you. Rainbow Dash smirked. School and I, before hiding in her sheets a little. If Ali doesn't make you sound like a baby. Hey, nothing wrong with singing a lullaby, kid. Dad said, kissing her sister on the forehead. Now, we get to see what I write when it comes to lullabies, as opposed to a certain bad writer who I know loves <laughs> torturing me with the comments. Little dreamer, sleep now and prepare yourself for the days ahead. Little dreamer, what are your dreams with your dreams of heroes in glory? Little dreamer, what are your dreams with your dream of love and joy? Little dreamer, know not to fear the dark dream of light. Know that I will always be there to watch you and to make things right. Know that I will always be right here to watch the darkness in my sleep, my little dreamer. Sleep well through the night. First, I opened the door to her cottage, smiled at the sight of all of her animals walking around the house. Smiling, she so began to tuck each little creature into bed, kiss the good night, and walked towards the stairs. She so began to sing, My sweet dreamer. What are your dreams? Tell them, please. My sweet dreamer, what are your dreams? Let me know them, please. My sweetest dreamer, I want you to help me see the skies. My sweetest dreamer, I want to help you see the world through your eyes. My sweetest dreamer, I want you to grow into what you dream to be. As far as I made her way to the last step, Sigi reached a pitch and tone to see the main mass dances beat for beat. The two finally sang the part of heart of the song, so they sang to Skilu in perfect harmony. Sweetest dreamer, I will always be there for you. Dear dreamer, I will always watch over you. Dear dreamer, I will always watch your dreams. Help you love you. Never fear, my dearest dreamer. I will always be there, love and care. Never fear, my dearest dreamer. I will be there to see you grow, to be there to love you, to see you become all that you are. My dearest dreamer, I love you. Softly, Rainbow Dash Rain, I hope you were a little kid's baby. So, listening to the soft story that came from her. Looking at the door, she could faintly hear Skulu saying, Love you, Mom. Love you too, Scrat. Death said softly, walking back to her room. She made her way to her head. She looked at a photo of her and Fluttershy, taking dust out their twilight's corner and Neeson. She ran a huff along the picture of her and Fluttershy hugging each other. Nate Flares, love you. Meanwhile, back at Fluttershy's cause, the new picture just ran a huff along a similar picture. Thank Rainbow. I love you. 
She then gave the phone a small kiss before falling asleep. Addendum. Sleep and walked home from her meeting with the other crusaders, hoping that the plan they had come up with would be successful. As she skipped along the dirt road, her mind began to think of new songs she could sing at her cute Sierra, trying to decide between a ballad and a dance beat. Smiling and skipping, she opened the door to carry herself a cake. Hi, lady! Oh, there you are, sticky bed! Eric says he turned away from the group of four ponies. Mother and father have come over to see you, as well as mother's fa mother and father. As the words hit Sweet Belle's ears, her eyes opened wide in utter horror. Mother and father's mother and dad! Oh, please! Skilu said, putting the dolls down. Do you read all those books Rarity has? Every pony knows that the bright side of the family are always evil monsters that just want to ruin the wife's happiness. It happens all the time in these books. The father's parents are usually the fun and loving ones, while the wife's parents are monsters. As Sweet Belle remembered the words that her friend had said that morning, she took a few steps towards the stairs and screamed, Ah! Roses! Jesse ran up the stairs in a white, pink, and purple blur. No, he wished it, he wished it her brother, eh? Asked the Canadian brown stallion with a hockey puck key mark. Oh, well, I don't quite know. Sweet Belle's mother said, Maybe she says smart neighbors, eh, Mama and Pop? Maybe, said the bear with a key mark. Your daughter is just like you were when you was that age.